This week on DevKit Weekly, we're going to be reviewing and raffling the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board from Raspberry Pi. Are you just getting started in electronics? Or maybe you're just looking to build something fun, like a Simon game, which unfortunately I've just been informed that anyone under 30 may not be familiar with. A remote control car, a mini drone, or even a smart robot that can detect and avoid objects less than 15 centimeters away by stopping, moving backwards, and pivoting at 90 degrees? That last sentence was kind of hyper-specific, I know. But these are all examples of things that you can do with the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board, which is powered by the Raspberry Pi RP2040 MCU, the first MCU ever designed by Raspberry Pi themselves. The 40 nanometer RP2040 MCU measures just seven millimeters by seven millimeters and houses a dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor that's clocked at 133 megahertz, which is accompanied by accelerated integer and floating point libraries and 264 kilobytes of on-chip SRAM. The Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller board itself includes an additional two megabytes of QSPY flash and supports a DC power input power range between 1.8 and 5.5 volts. It maintains an operating temperature range between negative 20 degrees Celsius and plus 85 degrees Celsius, which can be monitored by an onboard temperature sensor. Pretty cool. Aside from two UART, two SPY, and two I2C controllers, the Pico also uniquely includes eight programmable I.O. state machines that allow you to customize your peripherals to support specific applications that you want to develop. Long story short, this board packs a solid punch for its size. But all that hardware and I.O., including this micro USB, is meaningless without software and development environments to bring them to life. In this case, you'll be using the Raspberry Pi Pico C and C++ and Python SDKs. The C and C++ SDK includes libraries and a build system to write programs on the RP2040. The SDK also includes libraries that help you deal with USB, such as drag and drop programming for USB mass storage, multi-core programming tools, synchronization tools, as well as tools that let you incorporate and manage high-level functionality like audio generated from the PIOs. That's the programmable input and outputs. On Raspberry Pi's GitHub, there are 229 projects complete with code examples that you can experiment with. And those help you create just about anything you can think of with the C and C++ SDK. Everything from simple applications and low-level software to entire runtime environments built on MicroPython. Using the SDKs opens the door for implementations like the open source machine learning framework, TensorFlow Lite Micro. This library, which is available on GitHub, specifically targets the Raspberry Pi Pico and will help you run ML models that can perform sensor analysis tasks like voice recognition, person and object detection and images, and gesture recognition. I don't know about you, but if I wanted to build one of those robots we were talking about earlier, I'd be very interested. As for that MicroPython development environment, you don't actually have to build one because you'll have access to one through the Raspberry Pi Python SDK you can download the pre-built binary directly from Raspberry Pi's documentation page, or if you want to build it yourself, you can also find the source code for it in section 1.3 of the Python SDK datasheet. This firmware, a Python 3 implementation optimized for microcontrollers and small embedded systems, is designed to be efficient, drawing on the Pico microcontroller board's strengths, like its proportionally huge storage capacity. The MicroPython firmware also comes with a comprehensive programmable I.O. library that will help you write and interact with PIO programs, making it easier to create hardware interfaces or even something simple like extra serial ports. Furthermore, the MicroPython environment is where you can do some really creative projects like robot building. There's even a tutorial available on YouTube, which we'll link to in the description below, that will walk you through steps of using MicroPython to program your robot to be able to detect and avoid both stationary and moving objects. True to the Raspberry Pi philosophy of providing competitive performance capabilities and features at an ultra affordable price point, this little guy could be yours for a mere four bucks. Up until recently, Element 14, OKDo, and RS Group did a lot of the licensing, manufacturing, and distribution for Raspberry Pi chips and boards like the Raspberry Pi Pico. But because of supply chain uncertainty, OKDo and RS Group have pulled out of that arrangement leaving Raspberry Pi tech a little bit difficult to get a hold of these days. But we at Embedded Computing Design have your back. 
Over the next few months, we'll be giving away a thousand Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller boards to members of our community, including at AI Day, which is on September 20th. You can register for AI Day at the link below in the description, but remember, you have to be present to, at the event to win one. You could also, of course, win one of these by entering the raffle that's linked to you on the screen right now and in the description below. And if you win, either by attending the virtual event or winning this raffle, we'll ship you a Raspberry Pi Pico for absolutely free. So whether you're a seasoned hobbyist or you're just dipping your toe into the development world, the Raspberry Pi Pico has you covered. That about wraps it up for this episode of DevKit Weekly. As always, thank you for watching, good luck in the raffle, and we'll see you next week. For more content from Embedded Computing Design, including behind the scenes footage, raffles, giveaways, and just cool stuff that we're doing in general, visit us on social at the links provided in the bio below.